This is a big prison no-no. This is a big prison no-no, uh-uh. You do not do this. You do not do this in prison. Oh my God, you guys, listen to this. I was pissed. What's up, you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we're gonna be talking about prison. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be reading my prison journal. I have not cracked this thing open in a very long time. It's a crazy, angry, hot mess. So that's what today's video is. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison and my entire crazy life story is in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, we just hit 500K on TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's too dollars. It's only ever going to be two dollars. All of that is linked down below as well. And I have a vlog channel where you can see me doing vlog stuff like painting my wall black, which I have not shown you yet. Uh, it's not ready. And all the other random vlog things that I do. Okay, moving on. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into it, this kind of journal is the kind of journal that you're allowed to have. <laughs> Explain it better. Okay, so you cannot have a spiral bound notebook in prison. You can only have ones that are like this. So interestingly enough, my mom tried to send this to me when I was in a maximum security prison, same thing. They wouldn't let me have it. But then when I was transferred to a medium security prison to have my daughter, they let me have it at the medium security and because I already had it when I was kicked out of the medium security and sent back to the max, I got to keep it. Did any of that make sense? Long story short, I went to a max for classification, built my last bid, but I was pregnant. So they sent me to a medium security facility with other pregnant women and you know, they're not just pregnant women, but a lower level security. And then I beat up a chomo and then was sent back to the maximum security prison. So that's the whole process too. transferring an inmate from one facility to another, especially a solitary confinement inmate. I need to do an entire video on that. Please remind me if I forget. If I was a professional YouTuber, I would have sat down and picked out some things before I sat in front of the camera, but we all know that's not the case. Okay. Oh, I was so obsessed with the West Memphis three. I was so obsessed with the West Memphis three that I wrote several pages about them in my journal. This one says, I'm so obsessed with the West Memphis three. I'm reading Devil's Knot great book. And I'm amazed by what these boys went through. Their testimony is yet another example of how very messed up the state of Arkansas truly is. So many people knew damn well that Jason, Damien, and Jesse were 100% innocent, but it wasn't until 18 years later that the three guys walked out of prison. I want so bad to change laws here, but reading about the West Memphis Three leaves me kind of pessimistic about what I can actually accomplish. Yep. Don't worry, girl, <laughs> you're, you're gonna be pessimistic for years to come about changing the prison system. I firmly believe that I'm going to be talking about prison reform and you know, all kinds of things for many years to come because the people that want to complain about the cost of the prison system are very unwilling to have any real conversation about how we change it and how we rehabilitate people and how we lower recidivism rates. So they wanna complain about the cost, they don't wanna do any meaningful work when it comes to prison reform, because that would mean that we actually have to help people. Hurricane Sandy happened while I was in prison and I'm from New York, so I was very concerned for my family. So let me read this to you. Hurricane Sandy. So there's a really bad storm that's going to hit New York and I'm really worried. They said on the news that it was going to be the storm of a lifetime. The city is going to become a ghost town and the last time that happened was in the 1800s. I can't get through to my mom. I don't have any money on the phone. So I wrote a request to the major. She might let me come down and make a call. I'm so glad that Micah is here, Arkansas, and safe. I don't know what to do if something were to happen to my mom. I can only imagine what Sydney looks like right now. The last flood messed it up really bad. I need to get a letter home so that I know everyone is okay. Millions are without power and the subways are 100% flooded. We can only watch the news at 4.30, so I hope when it comes on tonight, they'll show something positive. So what's crazy is the chaplain let me call my mom. So what happened in that situation is the chaplain called me down to his office and he let me call my mom. Now that was a free call. This does happen occasionally. If there's a family emergency, a loved one passes away, you can make a phone call from the chaplain's office if you put in a request for it. So they called me down and they let me call my mom. 
and I remember dialing her phone number shaking. I was very scared that something was going to happen to her and in prison, there's nothing you can do if something happens to a family member. You just have zero control and I know that a lot of TV shows or movies will say that you can go to a funeral if a loved one passes away. That's uncommon. It's called a furlough and it's a unicorn. I never personally saw it. I've had friends that their parents have passed away and they can't get out. They can't go see their parents funeral. They can't get escorted there. It costs a lot of money to do that. And I believe you have to pay for transportation if the prison allows you to go to the funeral. So I've never seen it personally myself. I know it happens, but you know what I mean? Unless you're Lori Loughlin, uh, it's not going to happen for you. Oh my God. This is about field squad. Blech. So we went out to field today. Field squad, for those of you that don't know, is a Arkansas thing where it's essentially a chain gang without the chain. So you're just standing, down. you're standing outside and you have these boots. They call them shit kicker boots. I don't know why, I don't know. But you have big boots on and you have a gardening hoe and you stand in a line with other people and you hit the ground by the back of your boot, the middle of your boot and the toe of your boot. When you go back and forth three times, you hit the ground three times. Essentially all you're doing is just pulling up the dirt and my hands were all cut up and bleeding and I freaking hated being on field squad, which they called ho squad, but I called it chain gang because that's essentially what it was, except we were not on a chain, but we were asked to belly with another inmate chopping the ground with a gardening hoe. And there was absolutely no reason for that other than punishment. So <laughs> that's fun. Okay, we went out to field today and I usually hate being out there. Yeah. But today I got to hold the sergeant's horse. I really want a horse now, <laughs> bitch. They're so beautiful. Things have been so bad in the barracks. We have no air, so it's hot and musty. And the only thing the guards say is shouldn't have come to prison. Our water is brown. It's so nasty in here. We need to have air moving because it smells so bad. <laughs> okay, that 100%, I completely forgot that the air went out, but that 100% happens and the guards would be like, shouldn't have come to prison. <laughs> but at the same time, the air went out in a Texas facility and inmates died because there was no air conditioning and it got so hot in the units that they actually passed away. So I wasn't asking for like air conditioning and like a pampered suite. I was asking for basic things like clean water and air circulation so that we didn't die of heat exhaustion. So, but it's fine, it's fine. Shouldn't have broke the law. I wrote another thing from Devil's Knot. I really liked that book, I guess. Thanksgiving. Another Thanksgiving behind bars, which is funny that we say that. There was no physical bars, but we say that. Like, I don't know why inmates say that or like why it's like a thing to say, oh, another year behind bars when we're not, we're not actually, there's no bars. It's like a sliding door. At this point I was in an open dorm, so there was no bars. Anyway, regardless, not the point. I got a chance to call my mom. She was cooking. I had to have cornbread stuffing. I don't like cornbread stuffing. I think it's a mushy, nasty pile of bleh, bleh. I know, I'm sorry, I just made a lot of people mad. I'm sure you make your cornbread a lot better than a prison chow hall makes their cornbread, but it was just this oh, mushy, nasty mush. I mean, there was no texture to it and I just couldn't get through it. Bleh. It's okay, I'll be home next year. This is yet again another time I wish I was locked up in New York. It's okay though. My mom spent the day alone. Court is in 17 days and I'm so nervous. Hollywood said that she'd be there for me and that makes me feel better. I was alone last time and I cried my eyes out the entire time. I think baby daddy is going to be there this time. <gasps> That's right. Okay, uh, for some reason I was told I had to go back to court for Micah. So they transported me back to county jail and for some reason I thought that he was going to be there and I was going to have to see him and I didn't want to see him. I totally forgot about that. I actually did not see him. They did not transport him back to court. For whatever reason, they just decided that that was not an important thing to have the father there. I don't know why. He could have also declined to go. I, I'm, I have no idea. But I didn't see him. I remember being so afraid to see him. And then being really anxious and really nervous to have to see him in court. And then when I didn't see him in court, it was like, I just worried for no reason. <laughs> Thanks anxiety. But yeah, I didn't want to go. And going to court for Micah was a very stressful situation. This is the first video you're seeing of me. My daughter was born while I was in prison and I had to go back to court from prison several times. 
And that's a whole process where they shackle you up, chain you up, put you in a van, transport you back to the county that you're from, you go to court. And when you go back to prison, you actually lose your housing assignment. You have to get a new housing assignment, a new bunk and a new dorm. And it's so fun. Sarcasm, it's miserable. Oh, county jail is a million times worse than prison and there's no freedom. The food is worse. Like it's just, county jail's the worst. <gasps> this is a big prison no-no. This is a big prison no-no, uh-uh. You do not do this. You do not do this in prison. Oh my God, you guys, listen to this. This bitch, <laughs> blank cooked a huge ass spread and didn't share. I don't know how many times I shared with her. I've shared a single soup with her and I don't know how many times I passed kites for her and shared shampoo and shit and how the fuck is she not gonna share? I need to get the fuck out of here before I lose my mind. That is aggressive. How the, how are you not gonna share with somebody that was always sharing with you? That is a huge, huge, huge no-no in prison. I, ugh. I'm mad reading that. So I remember this. I remember this. I remember who she was and everything. I think we're friends on Facebook, actually. I'm gonna send her this video because it's fine now. But in prison, like if you're my people and I associate with you, if I have a little bit of commissary and I'm cooking with you and I'm sharing with you or I'm hustling for you or I'm getting kites passed for you, sharing my hygiene stuff like shampoo with you, and then you get commissary and you make a big ass spread and you don't share it with me, the person that's been trying to help you out even though she has nothing, no, 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 no. That is so disrespectful and that is just a huge no-no. The old me would have gotten into a fight with her over that, you know, but I just kind of sat on my bunk, wrote about it and vented and just let it go. But oh my God, I remember exactly the, how the dorm looked. I remember what she made. I remember, she made nachos. I remember everything. That's so crazy. Ugh, I was pissed. I was pissed. I was probably pissed because I was starving. Do you know how ridiculous it is to share a single soup with somebody and then they get a little bit of money and don't wanna share their food with you? Like you look out for each other in prison and if you associate with people or you're friends with someone, you just look out for each other. That's just what you do. You know what I mean? So that goes against the code. It goes against the inmate code to not look out for your people after they looked out for you, you know, and respect is a huge deal in prison. So I wish I could say like, oh, that's the last time that I actually shared with her, but I don't think it was. I think I still shared with her and helped her out, which is dumb of me to do. But you know, I'm a firm believer in karma. As small as it sounds, as small and petty as that sounds, it is a huge deal in prison. So yeah. Also, sharing shampoo and conditioner. That's a big deal too, you know? At this facility that I was at, you have to leave your stuff in the bathroom, and then the person that you're going to share with goes in, grabs it, uses it, and then leaves it in the bathroom. You signal them and then you go get your stuff. I couldn't just pass it off to her and give her shampoo and conditioner. I had to leave it in the bathroom where the cops couldn't see it and then she had to go in and get it. Like it's a whole process to even share freaking shampoo in prison. Shampoo that we pay for because the prison's not gonna supply you with hygiene items, which I know sounds crazy. They will give you, every state's different, 12, $14 of indigent money. I can't say that word, indigent money and you can buy hygiene items once a month. You can only get indigent money. <laughs> Such a weird word. You can only get that money if you have no money on your books for at least 30 days. Then you're eligible for the indigent money and you can only buy hygiene items or stamps with that money. Oh, EPA. Okay, so a lot of people were getting out early. Men would typically hit this EPA, which is early release, early parole, what I, I, don't, I forget what it's called, but you get out early due to overcrowding. Now the men were getting out a lot earlier than women because the male prisons were more filled. So they were getting out six months to a year early. This says, I made the EPA. So the in-house parole officer said, as soon as my parole plans come back, she's going to process me out. I'm so excited and really nervous. I have a lot to do once I get home. I need an apartment, a car, a job. I have to get Mike out of DHS. It's so overwhelming and so nerve wracking. I got out two weeks early. <laughs> So it was like nothing, but I was still so grateful for it. Millie talked to me about her case today and I really want to help her. I had a Sully that had capital murder and I talk about her from time to time, but she, I've said this so many times, but she said to me, you know, you're just one mistake away from spending the rest of your life in the cell with me. And she really had a profound impact on me at that time because I was 
aggressive and mean and I didn't want to hear what anyone else to say. I had the world figured out. I had the world figured out. I had everything figured out. I'm going to do me like, ew. <laughs> but that's the mentality that I had. I didn't want to hear any what anyone had to say. I was never going to come back to prison and I knew that and I was fine and I could still talk to those old people. I could still do whatever I wanted. I could, you know what, I, you know what I'm trying to say? But once I figured out to sit down, listen more than I speak and to understand that everything I knew about myself and my life and my addiction and my mental health was wrong and I really needed to start paying attention to that if I wanted to be successful, my life changed. You know, I started to hear lifer stories. Instead of just listening to why they're there, I actually took the time to hear what they said. And I had never done that before. I had always just been like, oh, what'd you do? Hmm, that's crazy. But I slowed down, I took the time to hear what other people had to say, and every negative situation, whether it was that girl not sharing her food with me, or a lifer trying to extend some wisdom to me, I sat down, I listened to it all, and I used every single thing as a learning experience. Instead of being jealous for the women that went home, I started to learn from them, you know, how they did their time, or why they are repeat offenders. Why was I a repeat offender? What could I do to change that? My whole mindset changed once I slowed down and started to actually hear the people that were around me and use the resources that I had, no matter how small the situation was. I'm gonna end this video with a quote. I used to love just writing down quotes that were meaningful to me and I love this one. I don't wanna be like me no more. I wanna be free and cleansed to the core. I'm assuming it's a song. And of course, you have to be the change that you wish to see in the world. <gasps> I'm not gonna end today's video. Mm -mm. Guess what? inmate Jessica had back there. Oh, score. Look at Jason's bald head. There's Jason. I told him when he gets out, I'll pay to have a hairline tattooed on him and he told me to fuck off, so. <laughs> That's how we talk to each other. This is an old picture of me and Randy. I was a baby. I was a baby. I was probably 19. Crazy, right? Zoo York. And there's some other pictures of inmates, but I don't have their permission to share that. So I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you, because there's no wrong way to recover. And I will see you in my next one.